This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. Growing up, a tradition that I thoroughly enjoyed with my family was opening up the Advent calendar each day leading up to Christmas. And without fail, each year the Bible verse that was revealed from that calendar on December the 1st was a quote from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 9-2 reads, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. This verse is as predictable as the seasons. The creators of Advent calendars all around the world either share the same material with one another to make their jobs easier, or they simply know that the people who will be opening up the calendar doors are a people in need of a Savior, because we experience much darkness within our own lives. Without a shadow of a doubt, we need to be reconciled to God because we walk in darkness. We have our own problems to deal with, the disappointments, the failures, the challenges of life. We are self-centered by nature as we first and foremost think of ourselves and our own needs and our own wants. Because of our humanness and the error of our ways, the world starts to grow dim. We have failed to live up to God's standards, and we need the light of Christ to shine upon us so that our darkness might be overcome. Fortunately for us, God comes to the rescue as he breaks into the world in the flesh as Jesus. To continue with the imagery from the prophet Isaiah, this messianic king is the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. God is with us as Jesus Christ. Jesus is that light which shines on all the people, banishing the darkness of our lives. God's salvation plan for his people is a plan that begins with humble beginnings in a cattle stall and culminates with a triumphant victory over the cross and the grave. Which is why we gather together in sanctuaries on Christmas Eve to celebrate the birth of a Savior. We gather for worship. We hear the familiar story and we sing hymns of praise declaring that all is calm and all is bright. But it all makes me begin to wonder, was it all calm and bright? Was the birth of our Lord as peaceful as we make it out to be? Gospel writer Luke begins his birth narrative with a journey. Mary and Joseph are on a trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem, where Joseph is to be enrolled for the census. Now the distance between these two towns is 70 miles as the crow flies, so you can assume that you might have to add another 10 or 15 miles to the trip. It is late in Mary's pregnancy, so she more than likely rode on a donkey the entire way while Joseph set out on foot. As I reflect on the many road trips I've made with my family, I can tell you that the actual journey from point A to point B isn't always as smooth sailing as you might want. Not exactly a fantastic voyage. There are squabbles and comfort issues and disagreements as to which way we need to go, and there are problems of certain family members getting in each other's space. Surely none of these things would have come up with Mary and Joseph. All is calm. All is bright. When our duo arrives in Bethlehem, a problem arises. There's nowhere to stay. Now remember, this is the hometown of Joseph's ancestors, doesn't he have any family members that are willing to house them for a few days? Or even just for a night? Is there truly no room in the inn? Can't you just see Mary saying to Joseph, You want me to sleep where tonight? Hey, no problem. All is calm. All is bright. So the time comes for Mary to have her baby, and we all know how calm and collected childbirth can be. Now imagine that happening in a barn filled with a bunch of stinky farm animals. There is nothing chaotic about this situation at all. All is calm. All is bright. Then I imagine the door of the barn just swinging wide open. Maybe it was that night. Maybe it was a bit later. 
but some scrubby-looking shepherds peer into the stable, invading what little privacy Mary and Joseph and Jesus already have. No problem! Come on in! The more the merrier. After all, all is calm. All is bright. So maybe our story tonight really isn't all calm and bright. But when the shepherds relay to Mary and Joseph the message that they heard earlier from an angel, things begin to change. The angel says to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Mary's reaction to this message? Well, we read that she treasures all these words, and she ponders them in her heart. This is the good news that is proclaimed. All that's happened to Mary up to this point, a visit from an angel saying that she would conceive and bear a son, the support and encouragement from her cousin Elizabeth, the trip to Bethlehem, the birth in a stable, it all begins to tie together and make sense to Mary. This good news makes everything that happened prior to it worth the wait. Any darkness that she is personally experiencing, it's now banished away. She is filled with great joy, as this good news is a light of hope that warms her heart and her soul. It isn't until Jesus is inserted into the picture, and not until his true identity is exposed by some strange shepherds, that a calming peace overwhelms Mary and Joseph. The thought of Jesus being the Messiah, it brings focus onto what is important. No longer are the issues that Mary and Joseph struggle with at the forefront of their worry list, because now they see the big picture. They realize that God is in and amongst them as their son Jesus. They realize that this is the beginning of an even longer journey as God unveils a little bit of his hidden nature in order that his people might be brought back into relationship with him. Likewise, Jesus is entering into humanity that cold, dark night. You know, that does not rid us, rid us of our hardships that we face, but his presence most certainly helps us get through them. Jesus' ultimate goal is bigger than just resolving all of the challenges that we face. He comes to bring light into the world. He comes to defeat those powers of sin and death and the devil that weigh us down. With Jesus all is calm as we deposit our troubles and our worries at the foot of the cross, as the Savior who was born unto us fulfills his destiny, living out that salvation plan set by God. As you embark on your own journey back to your homes this evening, from your congregations, be reminded that Jesus is that great light that shines in our darkness. Despite the challenges that we face and the failures that we experience, our Savior has come for us. The birth of Jesus demonstrates the magnitude of God's love and the great lengths that he goes to in order to claim us as his own. Jesus is with us. Hope has arrived. All is definitely calm and bright. Amen. Remember as you go about your day, that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today, knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Merry Christmas.